teaspoon? Here. You got a minute? Yeah, I got two. What's on your mind? Yeah, I need some advice. Kid, you come to the right place. Marshalling may be my business, but advice is my call. Uh, it's about Lou. Oh, yes, Louise. I don't have much experience with women teaspooning. But since y'all found out Lou ain't a boy, well, she's, she's becoming more and more of a woman. Time and distance, son. That's the key to understanding women. Time ain't the problem, teaspoon. It's, it's the distance that I'm having trouble with. Distance, huh? Me and Lou, we've been getting real close. Yeah, I've noticed. I mean, I mean real close. Like in the Bible. Now, I know that... I know that what we're doing is wrong. And I've tried to do the right thing by Lou, but she won't take me serious and confuses me. Uh... Confuses you, huh? Yeah. Because if she cared about me, like I know she does, then she should take me serious. Because Lord knows if we don't do things to make things proper, then something terrible could happen. And that scares me. So I think that maybe we should try not to stay as close. But then, to tell you the truth, that scares me even more. So what do you think, Teaspoon? Well, kid, uh, I think you're gonna have to do a little more thinking. That's what I think. What true? About Millie and you. I swear on my dead mother's eyes. Fine woman. Finest I ever met. Except for the fact she can't cook. What? said, the woman is incapable of preparing an edible meal. She's only the best cook in the territory. Millie? <laughs> she don't know a spatula from a spittoon. What? You're fabricating this whole story. She ain't never cooked for you. Oh, no? Let me tell you about the birthday dinner she cooked for me. It's only the plumpest, tenderest turkey you ever tasted. Stuffed with cornbread and chestnuts, served with lionese potatoes and them little bitty pearl onions and fresh carrots she growed herself. All of it washed down with a bottle of wine from France. And for dessert, she made blueberry and apple pie about yay high and covered my slices with iced cream. She cranked for hours. Can't cook, eh? Well, she might have cooked for you, Barnett. But you ain't yet partaken of Millie's greatest gifts. Which? The ones bestowed on the marriage bed. <laughs> Tigress. That's what I call her. That's what she was. Wild and insatiable as any jungle beast. Mm. <laughs> I stole that money, but it's the only mistake I've ever made in my whole life, Mr. Poole. I swear it. I started this bank with that money, and I've had a good success with it. And I'll return every cent I made 
If you'll just let me go free to live peacefully with my wife and Mr. my daughter. Mr. thou shalt not steal means just that. Not that it's permissible to steal, then return the money with interest. <laughs> <laughs> Please, take the money. Just let me go. I've got a wife and a daughter. Come on now, Gideon. Ain't there just a little room for some mercy here? There can be no mercy for those who have shown none themselves, William. This man has a wife and a daughter. They are innocent victims to all this. Now, how are they going to live? There's no bargaining with the commandments, Mr. Cody. Simon, take Mr. Pullman to the Federal Marshal in Abilene. Oh, I'll never get there alive, and you know it. Mr. You look like an honest man. Please, help me. Now, hold on a minute. Gideon, I have a friend in Abilene. Her name is Amanda O'Connell. She owns a Silver Spoon Saloon. Now, if I take Mr. Pullman Good there... Cavorting with fallen women, Mr. Cody? Now, that really doesn't fall into the category of doing the Lord's work, now, does it? Now, why don't you help Simon put Mr. Pullman in the cage? Caleb, do you wonder if our new recruit has a stomach for doing the Lord's work? Well, he did seem to lack sufficient ardor. Mm-hmm. We can't risk disloyalty. Perhaps we best determine just how unswerving Mr. Cody's dedication really is, huh? Get in there, boy. Get on in. John! John! Tell my wife they're taking me to Abilene! Tell her to get help! Get up there, boss. Please, mister, don't let them do this. <sighs> Miss Sweetwater, William? Looks like a nice little town. Not as nice as they come. Yeah. Maybe it's time we did its citizens a favor. Caleb, didn't we have a warrant for a man recently sighted in Sweetwater? I believe we do. Justice grind exceedingly slow, Mr. Cody, but they do grind exceedingly fine. If there's anything you need, don't hesitate to call upon me. I implore you. Uh, ma'am, <laughs> could I talk to you for a minute? Marshal Hunter, of course. You were just in time for tea. <laughs> Ma'am, I'd like to uh, discuss our little predicament, if I might. Well, I'd be happy to help in whatever way I can. Well, thank you. <clears throat> While I, of all people, can understand the desire to have nine spouses, I do question the advisability of trying to have them all at the same time. I just didn't have the heart to divorce them. They were all so contented. It would have been cruel and unfeeling. Besides, I do adore weddings. Would you care to see my picture album? Well, ma'am, I, I... Well, I carry them with me at all times. This contains a visual record of my first marriage to Bud Birch. He's an assayer over in Long Fork. Still among us? Oh, yes. Healthy as a horse. Uh, this is the official portrait. Oh, it's very handsome. Yes, that's one of the reasons for all the weddings. I, I do look marvelous in white. You, uh, certainly do. <laughs> but, uh, earnestly, ma'am, uh... Why'd you actually have to go and marry them all? Such relations outside the bonds of holy matrimony would not be proper. No, 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 of course not. I didn't mean to suggest. Uh, forgive me, I was, uh, just, I'm, I'm making a mess of this whole thing, ain't I? Teaspoon. Huh? May I call you that? Uh-huh. Teaspoon. The unvarnished truth is, I love men. I love them all. 